Hello everyone and welcome to a short video tutorial featuring the Lua 5.1 library. The tech I'll be using today is Codeblocks 13.12 and the compiler I'm using is MinGW 4.8.1. The first step is to create a global variable. I've called mine Lua but you should probably call yours Lua 5.1 or whichever version of Lua that you're using. The base installation folder where I've put my uh, Lua library is C drive mingw 4.8.1 backslash libraries backslash Lua 5.1. The include path um, that I have here so that uh, is in my is mingw 4.8.1 backslash libraries backslash Lua 5.1 backslash includes and the lib path that I'm using is C drive backslash mingw 4.8.1 backslash libraries backslash lua 5.1 backslash lib. Now we use that global variable in our build settings so you go to project and then select build options and uh, I can you can see here that I've got two versions of my project one set up for debug the other one set up for release. When I go to search directories here uh, the first one is the compiler search directory so this is where I use my global variable which is in the form of a macro here what I called my global variable was LUA and I'm asking here specifically for the dot include field and I've replicated that macro between my debug and release and that's so that my project can find header files associated with Lua the next tab across here is the linker tab and I use the same macro here LUA except I request this time the dot lib field from my global variable and this will tell my program where to find the dot lib files that I am or the dot so or the um, dot a files that I am linking against uh, in my program. Now I've replicated that between the debug and the release projects as you can see there. Um, now when I go to my uh, linker settings you'll see that I'm linking against the library LUA 5.1 that's in my debug and also in my release build of the project. Now in order to use Lua you're going to need to include the following files. Note that the extern C notation here is absolutely required. It's a requirement of the library. Uh, those of you who had already seen my MooJS tutorial would have seen that I had a panic function there um, but those who have not I'll explain that now. Uh, this is a uh, this is a global callback which usually you would put in say your game or your application singleton as a static member but for the sake of this tutorial it is a global function I know global functions are naughty but this will just have to do for now um, so I, I send a little message to the console uh, letting the user know that there has been a panic I get the top value from the stack in the event that there, are, that, the, that there are no values on the stack, then we'll just skip this little bit of code here and return zero. In the event that there are values on the stack, then I want to grab the first one. The reason why I want to grab the first one is because when Lua has a panic or some kind of error, it squeezes that error string right onto the stack. So getting the uh, top element from the stack is what will allow me to, is what will produce the error for me. Note that I use error colon um, to send text to any of my error logs. This is so that I can do a search or a grep through my error logs to see, uh, to be able to pinpoint exactly where maybe Lua went wrong. Uh, this is the beginning of the program, program entry point. The first step is to create the Lua state, which is the virtual machine that we will eventually, uh, that, will, that will shortly attach our script to. Uh, what I do in the next line here is my Lua at panic method that sets the panic callback to the function that uh, we created up here uh, and uh, in the event that there's any kind of errors then that callback will be triggered then we call Lua L open libs and what that will do is, is there's a base set of libraries that uh, come with Lua and I'm binding those to the virtual machine. So this will allow me to do things like call Lua math libraries uh, to be able like, to call sine or cosine, etc. Amongst and also file input, output, and several other basic libraries that come with it. Now the next step in the process is I call Lua L do file. And what this will do is this will both uh, load and also compile my Lua script into the virtual machine. Uh, so that we can begin uh, grabbing variables or calling functions and uh, 
begin actually executing some of our Lua code inside of C or C++. Um, I pass to this the point, I pass to the do file, the first parameter here is my Lua state, my virtual machine, and I pass to that the file name of the Lua script that I want to load and compile, which is my Lua script dot Lua. In the event that the function returns zero, then it was successful. If it returns uh, one, then it was uh, then there was a problem. So here I use the same notation I used for error up here, which is error colon, which will, if there's in the event that there's any kind of problem, then it will tell us that the file did not compile successfully and exit failure. Um, now those who saw my MooJS tutorial will notice how that there was a uh, JS underscore get global method and uh, that what that did was that that grabbed the uh, function that we grabbed the, grabbed the function uh, handle from our script file here that was loaded and compiled and pushed that onto a stack and then we were able to uh, execute a JS call or a Lua call. In our case here, in order to be able to run, a f run the function, we have to get the global handle for that function. Now Lua get global uh, is a two step, does two things. It grabs the global and also pushes that onto the stack. Now in between these state, in between um, in between these two calls here is where we would usually push our variables that we wish to pass to uh, our Lua script function um, onto the stack. Um, I have left that stage out of uh, this tutorial. Um, now, uh, when I use my Lua underscore call function, what I uh, the first parameter that I pass is the is the Lua state, the virtual machine followed by the number of arguments that we are going to pass into the function call. In this case it's zero because we haven't pushed any onto the stack. Uh, and the last parameter here is the number of return values which in this case is one. Uh, the val once that function has been executed then it will push the return value from that function onto the stack which is then printed in this line here. When we call lua underscore two string p lua state minus one which will grab the first value from the stack and convert that into a string we then call lua close and we pass to that the pointer to the lua state or rather the lua virtual machine to shut it down now what does our lua script look like our lua script is very simple and this is the one that we're going to call which is function hello world which returns a string literal called hello world zzz so when i show this program in operation first of all i will build it a successful build and then i'll call the run method and you'll see here that the result of the function call is hello world zzzz now we can change that by for instance making that one two three four five six seven eight nine I'll save that, we'll run it again, and you'll see that um, the result of the function call, hello world, is, uh, is hello world 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now in order to induce a Lua panic here, what I'm going to do is I will create an error by removing the brackets at the end of the function declaration, and then we will run the program, and you'll see that what we've got here is error, we could not pass the Lua script file, check to make sure that the file exists or that the syntax is correct. So that's branched through to this section of code there. Now I'll restore that. Thank you uh, for your time spent watching this tutorial. If you found this project useful, uh, then please consider subscribing to my channel. I'm interested to see any projects that anyone undertakes as a result of, uh, as a result of gaining some knowledge here. Uh, thanks for your time once again, and until next time, take care.